Well, I'm Nadine Nadim, professional football player, play for PSG and the Danish national team. I was in Afghanistan, on Afghanistan until I was eight, nine years old. But because of the war and the Taliban, we were forced to leave the country and, and we, yeah, escaped the country and landed somehow in Denmark. Um, was a refugee, was in a refugee camp as a kid. Um, and that's also where I started playing football. And that's where I started my new life. Um, short. <laughs> We wanted to go to England because we have family in England and before when you we paid a lot of money to some human smuggler to get us out of the situation and somewhere safe but somehow we landed in Denmark you know we don't know why it's just well at that point you don't really care um, the only thing we cared about was that we were safe and somewhere where there was no war. We knew what football was but never really like played played um, any sports, to be honest. Me, my older sister and my sister after me, Diana, we started playing once we arrived in Denmark and we actually played for a long time together also. First time I saw girls play was in Denmark and uh, I thought that was pretty awesome and I wanted to also, of course, uh, be a part of that. And, uh, and first time I saw it was, yeah, the refugee camp where the kids were playing. Um, opposite the, the camp was a football, uh, football club where, yeah, I saw girls teams, boys team train, play games. And I was like, okay, this looks easy. <laughs> Suddenly I was in a situation where a lot of doors were, you know, open to me. I just had to walk through them and grab whatever I wanted to. And before that, I wasn't, I wasn't really, you know, the idea of being able to do whatever you want to do. You know, on a young age, I, I became good really quick. Um, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> But being, you know, dreaming about, I, I also used to dream, you know, like playing in front of a lot of people, like walking out of the stadiums, you know, all, you know, the little things that you dream about. Having like tons of shoes, football shoes that, the ones that you like. But for real, that I believe that I could live of it um, came later on, you know, and uh, again, I, I have never cared about the money and anything about football, just I wanted to play like the highest level because for the challenge sake, not because of anything else. And everything that came with it, it was like, wow, that's awesome. First time I was offered a contract contract, I think I was, um, was 16, 17. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll take it, <laughs> you know? Um, so. No, I wasn't really a Danish girl like uh, I am. I don't think I still am, you know. Um, of course, some people accept you easier and faster than others. But no, like I, you know, I'm extremely aware of how situations work, how it is. And I knew that, you know, I have to fight or work harder than a Danish girl just because I'm not Danish, you know, I'm, I don't look Danish. And I think that always put like a bit more motivation in me and you know, the fire always, I was like, okay, it's cool. Um, that's how it works. I just have to be better, um, show them more um, of who I am. And you know, if someone, if people don't accept you or whatever, or you know, don't like you, for me, that's never been like a problem because I, I, don't, I don't care to be honest. I don't get affected by it, that kind of, yeah, f fuels me more, um, so. To be honest, like I dreamt about these situations. Um, yeah, you know, as a kid, I told you when I was laying there at a refugee camp and I was like oh, walking out in front of so many people like, going crazy. And I knew it was possible, you know, you, you would see like glimpse of it here and there. 
but being a seen as life out of the stadium, you know, getting like goosebumps by the fans and everyone, Parc des Princes en Saint Lyon, um, it's just so cool, you know. And everyone that's been working extremely hard, as we said, to to kind of change the game, you know, go against all these challenges, all these barriers to reach where we are. Uh, and it's far from over, you know. I think teams like the U.S. women's uh, national team, like the They've done all these battles. They, I think, they are uh, pioneers when it comes to changing the games and the women's game. You know, you see them and you're like, yeah, we should do more. Um, you see the uh, the Norwegian team who wanted to have equal pay. The Danish national team. We fought for like a better terms with our federation, which at the end cost us the World Cup. You know, like there are so many of these battles going on all over the world, and it's spreading, and all because of what? Because of the love for the game and plus you want to have the change, you know. It's not about the money, it's about respect and fairness. Going to the US oh, was one of the best uh, decisions in my life. I loved the US. <laughs> I was there for three years, three seasons. Everything about the country, um, the people, the football, the way, you know, they, they promote the game, the way the game is. I played first in um, New Jersey, Sky Blue. Um, loved it, it was really, really cool. But my first game that I played against Portland in Portland, so I was, I was with New Jersey, yeah, and, and I saw the stadium like sold out. I don't know, I think it was like 20 something people. And the atmosphere, I was getting goosebumps, even like, you know, they were against us. And every time you touch the ball, they're like, boo. And I'm like, I love this place. I think I, I showed like what's possible in terms of if you're dedicated to something and if you believe in in your dreams, you know. And I'm aware of that role, and you know I uh, I speak my mind everywhere I go. And I think also it's healthy to show because I can also see like how society is becoming kind of more negative towards the the idea of having you know, other people coming in and all that and helping people, you know, like you're becoming a bit more, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't know, selfish. And I think it's important to see that, hey, not everyone is going to be a trouble. You know, there's, you can actually gain something out of helping other people by uh, like them people that you help, they're going to, you know, affect the society in a positive way. They're going to help you to improve. They're going to, you know, be situations later on where they're going to help you back. You know, I want to obviously give back because, I know the value of small helps that is going to affect and build the person that you're trying to help, you know. So uh, people that have helped, helped me, it might be a bit little stuff or maybe smile or say something. I know how much impact it had on me um, and the person that I became. So I want to do the same. Thing, you have an obligation if you're in a position where you can you know help someone if someone's in front of you laying down what's the first instinct you do is just go and try to help them up I always say this you know I think if you have the opportunity to help someone why not do it um, comes to me natural So yeah, I'm going to be a doctor, 100%, you know, I've done five and a half years, so there's no way back. But I don't think that's just because of my career. Uh, I think that's just a human being, you know. I've been working a lot uh, with a lot of like NGOs and, um, and with a lot of uh, voluntary work. There are so many organizations that are trying to change the world, you know, and they're doing it bit by bit. Uh, and again, I wanted to be a part of this because actually makes a difference you know if you even if you like save one person's life you made a huge difference and I was approached by UNESCO um, just because uh, they were like yeah we have this new campaign going on you know education her future um, 
I know a lot of kids in, in the Western society like uh, cry about, oh, why do you have to go to school? But the only way you can change something is by actually educating yourself and then, you know, because then you know what's right and what's wrong, how you can get out of a situation. But not everyone in the world has that access. I remember my mom, you know, my mom is from a generation in Afghanistan where it wasn't okay for a girl to go to school. She comes from that kind of, you know, family. She had to sneak behind her dad to go to school because she w she loved school so much, you know? And I know that exists and there's so many girls right now that don't have the access. I want to be a part of to change that uh, because at the end, the way you can change anything is by knowing how to change it, you know? And how do you know stuff is by learning. So I was extremely honored um, that they, they wanted me to be a part of this project and uh, I'm looking so much forward to work more with them. I'll do my best and I'll do as much as I can just because I think uh, they do a great job. I was in Kenya this, this summer in the refugee camp in Kakuma, close to the Sudanese border. And that was one of the objects, you know, um, uh, objectives to tell the kids that, hey, I've been a refugee myself, uh, but I somehow came out of it. If I can, so can you. Um, what's the difference between you and me? We have, you know, the same uh, legs, the same hands, the same, you know, eyes.